fascinating story. If you need the press release, it's back there. If you have any questions, Bob and Aviva will be available after this to talk to you individually. But this is about the return of this Margaret Keene painting you see in front of us, painted in 1971 by one of the most iconic painters of the 1960s and 1970s. Heritage sold it in December 2020, not knowing that in 1972, it had been taken out of a dentist office in Honolulu in November of 1972 and went missing for almost 50 years. We are pleased to have Bob Whitman here to be returning the painting on the family's behalf. This is the man who founded the FBI's art crime team. And when Bob Whitman comes to you and says, guys, we got a stolen painting. Well, we take him seriously. And we immediately made sure that this issue was taken care of in the quickest and best resolution possible. We're thrilled to have Bob here with us. And I'm delighted to introduce now Aviva Lehman, who is the director of American art from New York. She'll bring up Bob after that. Thanks again for being here, everyone. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very excited to be here with you all today. My name is Aviva Lehman, and I'm the director of American Art with Heritage Auctions. I'm based in New York, and I was the one who discovered the painting at its home where it has been for quite some time. And I was struck by it from the moment I saw it. It was a thrill to sell it, but it's an even greater thrill to return it to its rightful owner. And there's something very magical about Margaret Keene, and maybe that's because I love the movie Big Eyes, but this certainly feels like a wonderful sequel to a very exciting story of Margaret Keene's life. And without further ado, I'd like to bring Bob Whitman up to talk a little bit further with you about the story. Hello, everybody. I'm not used to doing press conferences, quite honestly, uh, but I'm really happy to be here today. And the reason we're here is because of the good work that Heritage Auctions has done um, these cases usually take a lot longer. It's a lot more effort. There's a lot of legal situations, but in this, in this happenstance, heritage did the right thing. They're returning the heritage of a family to them, to their family. So heritage is living up to its name, heritage auctions. This case started in April of, uh, actually for me, started in April of uh, this year. I got a call from a person in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, she advised me that, uh, she had been searching for a painting for many, many years and that the painting was stolen in 1972 from her dad's office. Her dad was a orthodontist and he had uh, gone out and gotten this painting created uh, through Margaret Creek, Margaret Keene. Uh, and he, when he did the painting, he wanted to have children in the painting. So he put seven different children in the painting to show all of the different nationalities and races in Hawaii. And he put that up in his office to make the children comfortable when they came in to get their, their teeth worked on. So they kept the, uh, the painting in the reception area. And what had happened was there was a window, a glass window where the uh, office manager would sit. And every day from 12 to one, they would close the glass window and the whole family, there were a family working there, they all had lunch. Well, on a specific day in November of 1972, they opened the glass window and were shocked to see that the painting was missing. And this was a favorite painting of the whole family. And the reason for that it's because if you look closely, the little girl, the little dark haired girl in the middle of the painting was the lady that called me. She was the person who was actually in the painting. She was seven years old at the time that the painting was created. They had sent a photograph of her to Margaret King and Margaret King put her in the painting itself. So that's why it was so special for her to be able to get this painting back. In the press release, uh, you'll see a photograph that the, uh, that the woman sent to be of herself when she was seven. And it's astounding. Even the hairdo is exactly the same. So quite honestly, you know, we, we do recovery of art. Uh, it's what we do for a living. At the FBI, I recovered more than $300 million worth of art and stolen property involved in frozen art claims. It's a $6 billion criminal industry worldwide every year. But in this case, we were able to recover this uh, for this family. And the proof really was in the photographs of the little girl the, the nine people still living in Hawaii who were contemporaneous, they were still alive from the time of the theft. There's something in the water in Hawaii that keeps you alive a long time, <laughs> I can tell you. Uh, some of these people were 90 years old, but the sister of the orthodontist is still alive, 93 years old, and she remembers the day it was stolen, just like it was yesterday. And so these reports of investigation were very important 
to be able to give to Heritage and to show that this is actually what happened. Uh, as a result, Heritage immediately uh, got the painting back from the uh, buyer. They notified the consigner of the situation and worked with us 100%. So the family is thrilled with the work that Heritage did. They're very happy about, uh, about what's happening here today. Uh, they're, they want to remain anonymous, and uh, that was for security reasons. Uh, it was stolen once. They don't want to have it happen again. And so as a result, uh, I'm here representing them uh, and their wishes. In the report that you'll get, the press, uh, press uh, package, there's actually a statement from the family uh, and how they feel about this and how wonderful it is for them. So this is a good news day. You know, we don't get many of those, but today is a really good news day. And a lot of that, of that is a result of the work that Heritage Auctions did today. Does anybody have any questions from Bob? We can certainly do uh, one on ones afterwards, but if you have a question now, feel free to ask it before we'll do it from the painting individually afterwards. Sir, can you tell me the history in that picture? What are the paintings there? Uh, so the, the history of the painting over the, over the course of the 50 years is basically, it's, it's known from about nine, the late 1970s until today. It was with a family from New Jersey. They had bought it at a legitimate uh, gallery. Now, the, the questionable part is where was it from 1972 to the late 1970s? So maybe for six or seven years. Uh, generally, in my experience as an art theft investigator and recovery specialist, I see paintings like this go maybe change hands three to four to five times over the course of a four or five years period before it ends up where it's gonna be. But what happens is we always recover stolen art when it comes to market. I mean, that's, that's what happens. That's why art theft is a ridiculous, really, crime because at some point it's gonna come back to market and we have the records. Uh, even, the, only, even the Mona Lisa was stolen in 1911 and that was recovered within two years. So, I mean, they always come back to market and that's when we recover them. Whether it's a you know, FBI undercover operation or a simple sale at an auction, they come back. This one sat in a family home from the late 1970s until 2020. So it was a long time, but it came back. And I think I really know the answer to this question, but was anybody ever arrested for the theft? No one was ever charged or arrested with any kind of crimes for the theft. We don't know who stole it. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, what happened was it was taken out while the, while the family were all at lunch. They, didn't, they were all in the uh, offices, but the window was closed. They didn't hear anything. They surmised, they told me, that there was a stairwell right next to the, uh, to, the, to the office and that the person who took it actually ran down the stairwell with the painting. Now, remember, in 1972, Margaret King was very popular in Hawaii. She was, a, she was a, basically an art star in Hawaii. So they, they, they must have taken it down the steps. And the reason they thought that was because had they gone down an elevator, they would have had gone past the receptionist who would have seen it. So no one saw the painting leave the, the building. So as a result, they, that's how they figured they got it out. After that, there was never another, you know, inkling of anywhere of where it could have been. They never found it again. Well, the family wants this back for their own personal reasons. Are we allowed to ask for survivors what a painting like this is worth on on the market at, at auction or something like that. I would leave that for Avia because she's the expert. Well, we sold the paintings. So okay. Can, oh, okay. Sure. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. We actually did sell the painting in December of 2020, which is how this young girl, who's now a woman, saw the work because it was on our website and it was available on public display. When we offered the work, the estimate was 12 to 18,000 and we sold it for, I believe, 35,000, right around there. Um, so that is, you know, often, that's often what a fair market value is, what something sells for at, at a public auction. So since it was so recent, I would say that's what the painting is worth. The market determines the value. While you're at the market, how often does something like this happen in your line of work where you discover a painting that does not technically belong to the person who is offering it for auction? Very good question. And it's, I've been selling American art for 19 years. I've been worked in auction for 23 years. This is only the second time I've seen something like this happen. And the first one was with another totally different situation. It was a Marsden Hartley painting who was an American modernist. And it was a work that was restituted from Germany after World War II, which is a little bit more of a common scenario. Stories like this, which is very Thomas Crown affair, is more uh, found in the movies than in reality. So um, this is my first time having an experience quite like this. Is there a specific title for Yes, the title we offered it at auction was uh, Eyes, Upon, uh, Eyes Upon You. 
because as you can imagine, just like the movie Big Eyes, Margaret Keane, it's all about those big eyes on little children and little and dogs and little, little creatures and things like that. So it's actually quite rare to see a Margaret Keane with so many figures in it and a work of this size. So it is a true tour de force for the artist. It's the finest Margaret Keane I've ever handled. And it's probably the finest Margaret Keane I've ever seen based on size, subject, and quality. So it's exciting to share this work with the public, not only for the story, but so you can all enjoy really maybe the best Margaret Keane you'll ever see. Any other questions for me or for Bob? You guys have no more questions? We can, we're okay. Well, we would, uh, sure. My name is Aviva Lehman, which is spelled A V like Victor, I V like Victor, A. Last name Lehman, which is L E H M like Mary, A double N like Nancy. And I am vice president and director of American Art for Heritage Auctions. Yeah. My, name, my name is uh, Robert, spelled R O B E R T, uh, Whitman, W I T T M A N. I'm the president of Robert Whitman Incorporated, which is an art recovery and security firm. Um, I was the uh, senior investigator and the first uh, founder of the uh, National Art Crime Team for the FBI. And sir, were you the person that actually contacted the family? The, con the family contacted me. They actually called me. Uh, you know, I have, I have a website and, and they, they looked at my website, heard about what I do, and they contacted me to begin with. Tell me their reaction or from that first phone call, what was that like? Well, generally, uh, you know, uh, I do this for a living. So I've seen this happen quite a few times, actually. And, uh, you know, usually we, we do a lot of due diligence before we'll take a case. Uh, I can tell you I probably turned down 80% of the people who call me, uh, everything from stolen Rembrandts, from kings and queens to whatever. And uh, usually we don't do those cases because uh, uh, there's problems with the cases to begin with. Uh, but this case, uh, we, we did our due diligence. We looked at everything. We looked at the, uh, we did the reports of investigation, spoke to people, and we were convinced that uh, this was a, a righteous case. So as a result, we, we, we took it and we carried forward with it. And what about when they finally realized they were just taking back? What was their reaction? Absolutely uh, thrilled. I mean, they, uh, uh, the, the young lady, you know, has been searching for herself, you know, for the last, 50 years and to finally find herself is an amazing, uh, I guess, an amazing feeling for her. And uh, today she's, uh, she's got children and she's uh, uh, doing well, but she's really, they're happy. They're so happy. And, and it was amazing because the 93 year old sister of the, of the orthodontist who passed away, the 93 year old sister told me that uh, her brother was despondent throughout his life. The fact that they had lost the painting because he loved it. And he was, she was just uh, uh, sad that he would not be able to see it again. But that it was a thrill for the family to, to be able to get it back. Something that they thought maybe they'd never see again. And uh, this young lady who found it, uh, the, the person in the, in the photograph or in the painting as well, you know, she, uh, she did a good job. And she kept looking and she found herself after 50 years. How was the art and the items you recovered throughout your career? What is strength? Uh, from a standpoint of uh, the feelings for the family, it's very, very important to me. Um, there's been many paintings, Rembrandts, Picassos, whatever you want. Uh, a lot of things may be more valuable, I mean, financially from a market standpoint. Uh, but when it comes to returning heritage to a family, it's always a, a very special and important thing to do. I'm, I'm going to ask if they have time to do a couple of short interviews after this. Absolutely, and uh, you're good to go on my part. Thank you everybody for coming out. I really do appreciate it. This is a very special story for us. It's always great for us to be able to make sure that families are reunited with things that they have lost and to have Bob and Aviva here as part of this is very special. So thanks for being here. Sure. Thank you. We appreciate your condition.